Hey guys, so I'm super excited for this one. This is video number one of our nine video series with Mr. John Doherty. So John is our newest coach at Cogornogolf.com, an unbelievable addition to our team there. If you haven't checked that out, that's where you can send us in your swings. We can work together on your game from wherever you are in the world. We'd love to have you as part of the team. I've been following John for a long time. He's one of the top instructors in the world. The guy knows what he's talking about and you're gonna see and love him in these videos. So we broke up the swing, we're doing this series called The Perfect Golf Swing. This is for those of you that want a little bit more detail. Um, we go through the parts, where things should be at certain segments, the feels you're gonna have, it's absolutely unbelievable. So this first video is the setup. The next video we'll go through uh, the takeaway, we'll work our, through, uh, work our way through the, the swing here. So leave a comment down below, welcome John to the team and enjoy the video. All right, Mr. John, so let's, uh, let's start us off here with position number one, we're at the setup. And let's kind of walk through this, if you would, for us, and maybe we'll start from the ground up and talk through the segments that we're looking for at the setup position. All right, Eric, Yeah, for a full swing, I always like to start with the, the feet and work our way up the knees, the hips, the shoulders, down the arms, the grip, just kind of a, a or, way to organize you know, your checkpoints to make sure that you're being consistent with your fundamentals. Yeah. Um, so starting with the feet, for a full swing, I like to see about 14 to 15 inches between the heels. Now, if you got the feet, we want them flared out a little bit, and the reason why you flared is just to get that a little bit more range of motion um, either way. But a lot of people, once they flare their feet out, that stance looks wider than 15 inches, but mm. we're going to be actually measuring from the heels. Um, and then uh, stance width, as far as uh, the toe to the left heel, I like to see a little bit of a closed stance. And the reason why a closed, when a closed stance is it actually gives us more room later in the downswing for that right arm uh, to get in front of our right hip. Um, sort of pre-clears the right hip. So we got, with our feet, 14 inches between the heels, slightly flared toes. I like to see the tip of the right shoe kind of in line with the balls of the left foot. Mm, okay. Um, and going up to the knees, this is where it gets a little different. Um, a little bit more like Matt Wolf type setup where the setup, the whole gist of this is to kind of get us into impact-ish um, P1 position. We're kind of, we're, we're sort of previewing impact with our setup. Yeah. Sort of like Matt does with a little um, waggle. This is already kind of setting us up into that similar position. So okay. talking about the knee, the right knee being flexed. And, and for a lot of people, this is a little different, but the right knee being flexed out over the toes instead of it being kind of over the laces. So the right knee's flexed over the toes and also with the right knee. I like to see the right knee pinched in. So there's like three different knee positions people can have. You can have knees pinched in, knees over the feet, and knees out over the uh, foot. I like to see that right knee pinched in. So what we're seeing with the best ball strikers um, is that in their backswing, that right knee is inside the right foot and the right hips inside the right knee. With the left knee, because we got this closed stance, if I didn't do anything different with my knees, if I kept them the same, um, my hips and my thighs would be closed too, and I don't want that. So when I flex that right knee, I want to flex that left knee less. So when I do this little twist, this opens my hips and knees uh, compared to my stance line. Now when you add more flex with the right knee than the left, you are going to have more pressure in the ground on your right heel, and we want that, because that's really going to help us engage the straightening of the right knee and the rotation of the right hip. So. Working on the knees, we got flexed right kneecap over the toes, left knee, we can just say left kneecaps flexed over the laces. So, not talking much about the quads, but they're engaged. So I'm burning calories right now in this position. <laughs> I'd much rather be right here. Yeah. So when I'm in this flex position, this, is, this, this does take work. Okay. Um, my quads are engaged. My hips, my hips, talking about the hips, mainly from the down the line view, you know, you can have several different tilts with the spine, getting into anterior tilt, working all the way in the posterior tilt. Um, anterior tilt, we don't want a whole lot of curvature in the lower spine because it really disrupts the way the hips rotate in the backswing. It's much better to have a neutral spine. You don't want to go crazy and go severely posterior tilt, but just a neutral flat spine. And, and how you find that is you can go with extreme anterior and then extreme posterior. And if you don't do sit-ups, like I don't do sit-ups, when you do this move, TPI calls it the shake and bake. Yeah. And you will feel your abs <laughs> I like shake, that. But, uh, yeah. and it's embarrassing. But uh, uh, anyway, so we let's, let's go. So now we're up at the upper body and the shoulders. I like to see the shoulders um, open to the closed stance line. So this again, preview and impact. So at impact, our chest is open. Um, our hips are open, so we're kind of rotating open with the shoulders. It's about 30 degrees open uh, to the stance line. 
and and now going down to the arms uh, I like to see the uh, hands um, positioned just slightly in front of the ball so not nothing crazy like this where yep. the hands are the right wrist is overly bent and the hands are pushed forward but kind of previewing impact so impact I like to see the left hand just neutral uh, and slightly in front of the golf ball um, with this now with my shoulders being open and my hands just slightly in front of the golf ball this is going to allow my right elbow to bend slightly and, and, and flex, but my left arm is going to be straight because when I opened my shoulders, it pulled my left shoulder further away um, from the golf ball. So when that shoulder gets farther from the golf ball, it straightens that left arm. And now my right shoulder, because it's open, is closer to my hands, and that's going to make my right elbow flex a little bit. And this right elbow flexed um, at P1 makes it really easy to get things going into P2 um, with, the, uh, with the flexion of the right arm. <clears throat> now working up to the head, uh, this is where it gets a little different too. So it's set up, the right shoulder is lower than the left, and then what do we do with this head and our ears? I like to see the right ear parallel uh, to the shoulder plane. So that would make my right ear lower than my left ear, <clears throat> and then the chin down. So with the head, you see a lot of golfers do this. You see a lot of golfers look down their cheekbones at mm. the golf ball this way. And there's really no sport that ever does that. You can imagine a baseball player trying to hit a, or look at the pitcher <laughs> um, down their cheekbones. It just right. doesn't happen. But us golfers, we, we tend to get our cheek, our, our chin up because we're trying to make room um, for that left shoulder to, yeah. to swing um, yeah, yeah, under yeah. it. But uh, all right, so we kind of covered everything through the shoulders and the hands, and then you got the grip. So like, how do I do the grip at P1? I like to see, I always talk about the grip in the left hand and right hand in three different conditions. So you got vertical, like you're shaking somebody's hand. You got palm down, like you're dribbling a basketball, and you got palm up like you're asking for money. So I like to see that left hand palm down about 25 to 30 degrees, nothing too severe, but a nice palm down position so that I can get that thumb of that left hand on the right side of the shaft. And this really helps support impact. You get the thumb on top and it just gets to where you don't have no supportive impact. That right thumb being important to be on the aft side or the back side of the grip. Yep. And that makes it easier to get the palm down. I mean, it makes it easier to get the thumb over there if you got the left hand palm down. With the right hand, this is a little different too. Um, all these golf clubs have a seam up here on the top of the thumb. I like to see the right hand ride really high on top of the left hand. Mm. And the reason why is if I have this right hand too low, it makes cocking my wrist harder. Mm -hmm. So at the top, it puts more resistance on cocking my wrist where if I can get that right hand on top of that left hand so that my thumb peeks out a little bit, yeah. this really lets me get some range of motion in my wrist without that right hand inhibiting uh, wrist cock. Yes. So, um, That's a great point. And then another thing too with the grip, so just talking about where do I put it in my hand, well, it's more in the fingers. So just kind of right here at behind the base of the fingers and that lets me wrap that left hand palm down. Right hand, what's actually touching it, which is not much, is definitely in the fingers, so that you're basically just like you're, you're, like you're fishing. It's that touch, so the right hand, a lot of the right hand is the feel of what the sweet spot's doing. It's like a pin, you're like holding a pin as far as the feel of the club head in the golf swing. Um, it's not doing a whole lot, so very little pressure points are on the right hand. And uh, the pressure point, um, uh, as far as where the pressure's at, mainly in the last three fingers of the left hand, right hand's pretty chilled out on top of the left hand thumb. As far as club face at P1, I like to see the club face about you know one to two degrees open because ideally with this online swing, it's going to start the ball uh, just right of the target, and then with the path being about three to four degrees right, draw it in. Um, so, so that covers P1 uh, as far as the things I look at. Yeah, dude, that's unbelievable. Two quick questions for you. Yeah. Number one on the foot flare, is there like a stock amount that you would look for in each foot? Yeah, I mean, I would say, I would start with just a little because the more you go, it starts to become, it actually will cause you not to turn anymore. So I, yeah. if I do see people at oh, all, they, they tend to put that left foot flared too much and now that locks that left hip in the backswing and doesn't allow you to get a full hip turn in the backswing. So if you go too much this way, same thing in the follow through, it's like the little right foot just gets locked up. Yeah. So I mean, if I gave you a number, say like 15 to 20 degrees of foot flare would probably be good. It's just getting, you know, severe either pigeon toed or out, too far out just makes a radio a lot too much and then well, beautiful thank you and what, what john last thing what about shaft angle wise from the down the line view yeah i mean my arms are really long and uh so my hands are going to be a little bit lower to dress 
Um, but yeah, I mean, it, 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 so we're actually going to be impacting it somewhere up in this condition here uh, with the left wrist. Um, uh, well, you can tell you this, like the, the fingers at impact are about 45 degrees down. So we know that that's where a good impact is going to take place. So when we set up anything more than that with the fingers pointed up, we got to know that the body is going to have to make an adjustment, you know, from set up to impact either through the height of our body um, or the amount our left shoulder pulls up to make yeah. room for that. So it's just, I mean, there's really not a set way. It really is kind of our bodies are different. You'll see my hands are going to hang pretty low yep. at this, but at impact, this shoulder is going to be much higher. It's going to take care of itself. Got it. Dude, unbelievably oh, yeah. done. That was a beautiful a lot of stuff. list to start with. I think that's awesome with the setup positions. In our next video, we're going to talk about going from P1 to P2. All right, thanks for watching the video if you watched all the way till the end here. I'm going to play a little video with this hanger training aid. If you guys haven't seen the hanger training aid, and the reason why we put in so many videos is because it works so good. Not only do I use it all the time in our personal lessons, on our online lessons, but I use it with my own swing, and legitimately me using this and hitting balls with it on, I've gained like literally a full club with all of my irons. The compression is much better. It really helps with the wrist angle. So check this video out. We'll put the details in the description down below. If you have any questions about the hanger, leave them down below. I'd be happy to uh, answer them because I know this is one of very few training aids I've tried that will genuinely really, really help your ball striking. Hey guys, today I want to talk to you about the hanger training aid. I absolutely love this. I firmly believe that this is good for every single golfer. This hanger here creates and controls what I think is the most important part of the swing, which is the wrist angle. It snaps right on. It takes me probably 30 seconds to put on. I can put it right in my golf bag. And best of all is you can hit balls with it. You can actually hit balls with it. So I love this hanger training aid. Look at when I do that well, how that sits on my forearm. Now watch when I cut my wrist how that comes off immediate feedback for where my wrist angle is at. No one that can have too flat of a left wrist. One of the few things that all good ball strikers have we're trying to have, flat left wrist, right? Super easy to use, incredible immediate feedback with the coupon code gorgonogolf.com. It's only $59. You're gonna absolutely love it. We'll put all the details down in the description down below.